So you're babysitting on a Friday, Friday night, right? <clears throat> this is you already here in the corner. And here's the baby, like, uh, yeah, they're right there in a one of those car seat things. And you've got some physics homework to do, and it's all about this idea called free fall. And you don't know anything about free fall. And it's all about this idea of acceleration and stuff. And it's all really tricky. So in order to study this, you throw the baby. And the baby goes up, right? Whee! Now, I would never advocate throwing a baby outside of a car seat because that's just reckless. Oh, you're also going to run over there to catch the baby. This is always a good procedure. Catch the baby. But the cool thing is the baby's going up there and the baby's going down there. And the baby, see the baby in the car seat right there? It's a green baby. And then the baby, well, <clears throat> it's probably going to be a really nice throw where the baby's actually going to be upside down right here. Good job, you. But the baby's strapped in, so it's cool. And... The baby goes up and stops and turn around and comes down and you catch the baby. So first question is, is the baby in free fall? And I'm gonna have to define free fall carefully because a lot of people when they think falling, they'll be like, oh, this part of the baby's path was falling. And I kind of agree with that. This part of the baby's path was going up, but I'm gonna call it all free fall because I'm gonna say free fall is when stuff feels only gravity. That is the only definition of free fall we'll be able to use, when stuff feels only gravity. And I don't know anything about feeling, I don't know anything about this idea, there's another F word that you probably might be thinking about, I don't know, it depends on how much physics you've studied. When stuff feels only gravity. So, for instance, the reason that this marker is not in free fall is because it feels something else besides gravity. What? Oh, the piece of paper is pushing up on it. Sure, okay, fine. So that's the idea of free fall. Stuff moves in a very characteristic way when stuff is in free fall. So I'll finish making this box for free fall's definition. On Earth, when stuff is in free fall, it has a certain acceleration. I'll say the free fall acceleration on stuff of stuff on Earth is negative 9.81 meters per second square. That means that every second, the velocity of a thing in free fall is changing by 9.81 meters per second. I guess what I'm trying to remind you of is that the definition of average acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So the velocity of something that's in free fall, when something feels only gravity, its velocity must be changing steadily with this number right here. I wanna make one more definition before I ask you some tricky questions, and that definition is baby G, and baby G is this number, at least on Earth. I'm gonna say on Earth. Now, on Earth, the baby G is equal to 9.81 meters per second square. So notice the connection between these two equations. I just want you to say that the acceleration of free fall is downward and it has this strength right here. So I'm, I'm looking at baby G. My hope for your idea of baby G is that baby G is how big gravity is and the acceleration in free fall, acceleration in free fall is negative baby G, just cause we need it to be downward. Now we've got all these kinematic equations, we're gonna use these suckers, but I'm gonna go on, oh yeah, remember that about acceleration? Okay, I wanna go on and talk to you about this baby who's up in the air. What exactly is happening right here? This is a very important moment. If I were to ask you what's up, you'd say, a baby, stupid, don't throw babies. And I'd say, listen, it's in a car seat, it's carpeting, and I'm gonna run over there and catch the baby in case there's any trouble. So that's cool, the baby is definitely up, but also the baby is accelerating. And the baby's in free fall here and here and here. The acceleration is always that value, so it's always downward. The baby is accelerating downward on its way up and that's why it's slowing down. The baby's accelerating downward on its way down, and that's why it's speeding up. The baby's accelerating right here at the tip top peaky tip, and that's because it's changing its velocity. Maybe the baby's a girl, I don't know, I have a lot of girls, whatever. You've got, uh, you've got this baby, and right at the top, the baby is stopped. Now the thing about climbing a mountain, here, I'll draw you a mountain so you can think about this. If you climb a mountain, you know that you're at the top because you start going down again. So when you get up here, it's a good time to have lunch because you're at the top. And you can't go down again until you reach the top. In a nice happy mountain, please disregard that. We'll just slice that off and it'll crumble. There'll be an avalanche that direction. So the nice thing about free fall is it's pretty clear that at the top you have to stop because you were going up and then you're going down. So what I'm gonna say is the velocity at the top 
in the y direction is zero. So this is a really, really important realization. What if I make you a graph of velocity as a function of time? Here's velocity and here's time. The velocity starts out positive. Now this is a little bit counterintuitive, but I'm gonna say the velocity starts out positive because it's going upward. You want, here's what you want. I think you want a graph of position as a function of time. Is that what you've been thinking about? I'll do uh, a graph of position as a function of time. We'll put gray here, and this is position in the y direction as a function of time. Starts out at hand height, and baby is thrown up, and then comes back down and caught. Notice baby does not ever reach y equals zero, because that would hurt baby. We don't want to hurt baby. So notice, though, the slope of this graph, what's the slope of this graph? Slope of a position versus time graph? Well, that's the velocity graph. And I guess my point is, there's a moment, this instant right here, that I'm gonna call T something. It's a special time. And that's the moment right here. I'm gonna draw it on this graph also. And that's the moment when the baby stops. So we could call it T stop if you want. We could call it T stop. Okay. And T stop also appears over here. T stop. Mm-hmm, that's fine. And uh, then I'm gonna say that at that moment, the velocity is in fact zero. So baby is accelerating downward. The acceleration negative, that'll be, oh man, that'll be the slope. Oh shoot, the slope of this graph is the acceleration. So I can give you another graph down here of acceleration as a function of time. Notice that this graph was pretty slopey and pretty steadily slopey. We could put a piece of paper on there and see that I'm not very good at drawing a straight line. But my point is, we're gonna have this negative number right here for acceleration. And it's probably negative 9.81 meters per second squared the whole time when the baby is in free fall. So this is called del, uh, sorry, it's called T-stop. T-stop, guess what? When does the baby stop? Well, the baby stops at the top. So we could just call it T-top instead of T-stop. At the top, the baby stops, the height is maximum, the velocity is zero, and the acceleration, well, let's just mark T-top here. T-top. The acceleration is the same as it always was. Baby accelerates the entire time because when in free fall, stuff feels only gravity and the acceleration is downward and uh, I guess that makes it negative under typical circumstances. Goodbye! Don't throw babies.